The Bible calls the church the pillar, the ground of truth. If we don't talk about these truths on the ground of truth, we're in trouble. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Can you please share fellowship with someone this morning? Hallelujah. Greet someone this morning with excitement. Amen. Sound man, is this the best I can have? Praise God. Amen. All right. Please, you may be seated in the presence of God. Our time is already far spent. I think 10 minutes above the time. I intend to do something within the hour, an hour, 30 minutes. That's my, that's my target this morning. Uh, hopefully, it's possible. Hallelujah. Church, I said hallelujah. Praise God. Any issues there? Amen. Is there an issue with the online church? How long has that been? Huh? Well, I hope you have the recorded edition. And let me know when you're back up online because there's a church online and they should be catered for. So they don't meet us halfway. You have a flyer in your hand, do you? Okay, right as we're waiting for the online church to get back, please share the flyers. And for those of you who were yes yesterday, you understand the instruction as regards um, these flyers in your hand. It's not for personal use, it's not for keep. Now, this one, you are supposed to invite somebody with it to church next week, where you walk or where you live, anyone you want to do, where you walk or where you live. Uh, you see, we are, we are giving it in bits to let you know how sacred it is. Next week, again, we invade the streets as we did yesterday, and we keep doing it. The Bible says, you sow in the morning and you sow in the evening. Somebody complete the scripture. Even though you don't know the exact words, complete it for me. You don't know which one will sprout up, right? Good. So we keep doing what God tells us to do. And if you meet somebody that doesn't know Christ, don't just give a flyer. And the person wants to hear about Jesus, don't preach about church, preach about Jesus. And when you're done, you tell the person, of all the churches I know in this world, I am sure that you'll be discipled here. And that's the truth. And if you're sure the person will be discipled here, use this to bring them. This has already been blessed and we trust God that God will use these things to reach out to people. We'll be doing this constantly, uh, pushing out my faith that the church will be able to have the funds to do this uh, regularly. And we'll be having some meetings uh, come up like this. I'll be printing flyers, so, so get ready. Uh, the next meeting I won't announce yet. Um, just like you were surprised to see a guest minister yesterday. I'm not saying we have guest ministers, or no, no. Uh, but. Um, you just wake up to very special meetings, so get ready. Um, and also the World Conference is the flyers very soon, by God's grace, the designs should be on ground and um, getting ready for that deluge from heaven. And God's servants are ready, ready and geared up to be with us in that conference. And we're calling for the finance for that conference in Jesus' name. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4. I believe your phones are mute. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let the earth be silent before him. Hebrews 4.2. So let's read one and two together. If you found it, please stand for the reading of God's holy word. Is our church online back? 
please help me celebrate the church that is online this is not how we celebrate celebrate them thank you for streaming with us those on youtube and on mix ella for the audio stream god bless you real good for joining us amen hebrews chapter 4 i said amen, amen. one more time i said amen, amen. hebrews chapter 4 and verse number one one through two we're going to read together still in the series living by faith two three go everybody let us therefore fear lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it verse two for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them keep reading but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that had it i want to emphasize verse number two for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them so there are two categories of persons us and them but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that had it let's pray father in the name that is above every other name i ask for grace and unction to be poured upon these lips of clay that you will use everything that i am and i have my mind my body my vocal cords to be able to establish the counsel of your will i declare by faith through grace that i'm anointed to teach your people are anointed to hear this atmosphere is conducive for the ministry and the sowing of your word at the end of the day that the, there'll be disciples raised and jesus alone will be glorified in jesus precious name and god's people said Please, you may be seated in the presence of God. Hebrews 4 and verse number 1. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. This is how you know God speaks. Very early in the morning, a word came to me, and I want to bring that word. I, I don't mean to be insensitive, but I just want to tell, maybe the person is online, maybe it's everybody, maybe it's some people, it's maybe it's everybody on ground. But listen to this. God told me to tell you, that your job is not your source. Your husband is not your source. I don't care how much he gives you every month. Your wife is not your source. I don't care if she earns more than you. Your business is not your source. God is your source. I'm going to say that one more time. I don't think anybody got it because some of you find it hard to believe. What are you saying? I said, God said, your job is not your source. But please walk well and be ethical. Take your work seriously. Take your business seriously. Your business is not your job. It's not your source. Your husband is not your source. God is your source. The just shall live by faith, not by fear. Let me tell your neighbor the just. Say it with life and attitude, the just shall live by faith and not by pms you know what pms is you know what pms is okay let's use foil the just shall live by faith and not by fear when you said the fear part you went down you don't believe it i want you to say that out loud the just shall live by faith and not by fear by fear i mean fuel you understand that praise god amen Oh, is it because I wasn't saying for that you don't you didn't get it? <laughs> Amen. I felt like God needed to remind someone about that. Let us therefore fear lest the promise being left of us entering into the rest, his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. I'll come to verse two, but uh, verse one, but I want to begin from verse two. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that had it. Number one, in the school of faith, I want you to observe in this text, before I talk about some things in the school of faith, in this text you look at two things here. There are two categories of persons being spoken about, us and them. If you read the Amplified, it breaks it down and it tells you who the them was referring to. Do you know before peeping? Do you know who the them referred to? Who do they refer to? Or who was he referring to? The Old Testament church. The Israelites. Oh, you have it already. Okay. So can we read together everybody? Two, three, go. Everybody. Read out loud. Please, I don't want people to be quiet in this house. I want you to read out loud when we are reading. Is that okay? Read fear out of your life. 
read discouragement out of your life read poverty out of your life are you hear what i'm saying don't allow the situation in the world to get into your spirit if it does you're fi you're, you're finished actually two three go for indeed we have had what of the gospel proclaimed to us just as truly as the israelites of old did when good the good news of deliverance from bondage came to them but the message they heard did not prof benefit them because it was not mixed with faith with leaning with the leaning of the entire personality on god in absolute trust and confidence in him somebody say amen so do you know who the oh, we're not done yet so hold on i was going to ask something is it possible i'm struggling to see the fonts is it possible to make it bigger maybe after the service is it possible whenever you do the amplified for me make it bigger two three go let's go power wisdom everybody and goodness by those who heard it neither were they united in faith were the ones joshua and caleb who had and did believe is that all is that all all right now look up sound man can you give me some juice that's a little bit fine all right i can hear myself now that's fine so it says better for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them but the word preached did not profit them so if we have the israelites as the them permit me to say that and you have us please define us what is us what is us who are the us i know the english is not correct just follow me who is the us i'm expecting somebody to say something that is really new testament who is the us who are these ones are you not part of it us english us ah. how many of you got f9 in english i said who was the us you are here the us you are you did think you us we are the ones did you say that good so let's go right again they are what the old testament church us is the word house me i'm part of it is that okay so there are two categories of people in the school of faith notice that the old testament church came before us is that correct they came before us they had the gospel preached before us note that but we had the same gospel that they had is that what the bible is saying is it the same gospel according to scripture for unto us was the gospel preached unto us as well as unto them as well means what same quality is that correct same quality same the curriculum the syllabus was the same what we are hearing it, can you believe that what we're hearing is what the old testament church heard but there's a difference see the difference it says but the word preached did not profit them so the word can profit the word preached did not profit them thank you very much for this not being mixed with faith in them that had it so the reason we are profiting from the word today is because we mix it with faith but the old testament church did not mix it with faith so i want to talk about the mix now before i talk about the mix it simply means that it doesn't matter when you heard the word if you have faith you will have results some people heard the word before you now in, whether you like it or not in every church people come in batches okay do we have the, let's let, show me the recent batch, batch of people that came to the world city just point them the ones that are in church today recent the most recent batch let me make it practical just point they are very smart they know themselves he has pointed one two all right and i think the couple too and um, that's a recent bunch is that correct talk to me church that's a recent bunch good do you know in some cases they can have more results than people have been here so let's say this is them <laughs> she said, she said, I'm not them. <laughs> let's say this is them and this is us so paul said the word did not profit them no it, it will profit you i'm just giving an example okay okay the word not profit them 
not being mixed with faith so these ones just came and they're having and i've seen this in the body of christ people will just come and have results you know there was a time jesus talked about the parable of a man who employed people to work and some they were employed since money and they worked from money to done and then he got people who were about to uh who employed i think within the hour of the close time right and then he gave them the same wage prophetic scripture it is not when you come are you hearing what i'm saying now in the school of faith you might have been hearing the word of faith and not have results it's not about the time it's about the faith and your response or the response you have to the word of god now let me begin to explain some critical things here so it says the word did not profit them or the word that was preached for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that had it so i want to talk about the mix of faith i'm going to be talking about uh, how many points this morning let me see how many we can take i'll do about three to four points in the school of faith four points or th five points you should note in the school of faith that will help you live by faith five points that will help you live by faith i'm going to make this as practical as possible and i need you to pay attention so you can understand each point four points number one your faith must be mixed your faith must be mixed so um, when you write that point down i will need a few persons here um how many of you bake you bake so come give her a mic sound man make that quick and smart give her a mic just stand there i'll, I'll call you for, no come here and stand here um how many of you are you the only person is she the only person that bakes in this house who else bakes just so i can have another view you big come please stand here um anybody who does um who's an i, I don't want to a bricklayer people th people think it's derogatory right but i don't think it is it's an honest job an architect or a bricklayer you mix cement and all of that anybody who has that experience i'd like you to come out to you mix cement are you sure because i'm going to ask you some questions you you've you've molded a block before i need people who have molded blocks good you've yes you're engineer so come or oh, you're yeah, two to come come stay here so it says the word did not profit them because they did not mix it with faith now listen to this i want you to understand the mix of faith and you're going to understand it from this illustration so let's begin with you you bake yes sir a, a, a example of the things you come come let the church see you come come uh, you see i prophesied this morning that you become you see that night has happened praise god so um you bake cake yes, that's the only thing they make yeah, what's happening i need to hear her you can bake anything yes sir. that's the first time i'm hearing that B please what do you mean by anything can you bake a human meat <laughs> meat pie bread oh that's all that's all baking right yes sir. oh okay so meat pie but do you specialize in anyone cake. cake good and I, I think i prefer the cake so give me the ingredients so basically talking about uh, the mix basically flour and what sugar sugar margarine what's that butter. butter okay okay milk eggs eggs then baking soda or baking powder depending on what you're baking can you do without any of these not really no are you sure yes no feel free say what is it be professional are you sure yes you can't all of do them without any play of this. different parts in the mix what what, what do you think the, the butter does moist it makes it moist, moist. Soft. okay what's responsible for the cream you know some cakes are creamier than the other butter does the egg. butter, egg. butter so okay you guys Cheese break eggs right yes. wow yeah so that's why it's expensive now okay thank you very much stay here you go please i want to ask a question how many things did she call in the mix the bible says the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith we need to understand the mix of faith because sometimes we've been getting the ingredients wrong so can you remember the things she mentioned number one they said you need to face the camera flour i'm hearing things praise god baking soda making sure that okay let me uh, butter flour sugar there must be sugar milk um egg baking soda baking soda or powder okay you can use either of them soda or powder okay so tell me what, what is, is there any difference any twist to yours you can have mixed fruits aha uh -huh, hold on so you use flour what else do you use butter butter sugar 
sugar, eggs, eggs, milk, milk, mixed fruits. What, what do you mean by mixed fruits? Please explain. Um, raisins, um, um, cherries too. Cherries. You yes. put it inside cake. Yes. What, what What does that do? Then that will call that cake mixed. Um, Oh, is it the one cake. that is it, fruit okay? Fruitcake. Yes. Is it the one yes. that comes fruit with different cake. colors or something like that? No, no, no. Not necessary. No, it's different. So the difference is in the taste. Yes. Fruit cake. Yes, yes. Right. And you'll be if it's fruit it. cake, you should taste fruit in, alright? You'll be seeing the. Oh, you'll be seeing it. it. Yes. So it's both then sight and taste. Good. So have you ever done that before? You add that too. Good. So thank you. Give her a hand, please. Be clapping for them. So come, cement guy. What are the basic ingredients for molding a block? Just stay with a block. Sharp sand. Sharp sand? Yeah. How many of you know what sharp sand is? They say you need to come for the... Sharp sand. One? Cement. Cement. Or water. Water. Or sometimes um, we use stone dust. Stone? Stone dust. Stone dust. How many of you know stone dust? First time I'm hearing it, actually. Stone dust. Okay. So, okay, be very sincere with me. If you are mixing, have you ever had stone dust before? You have not. Good. Now, I like that. But you mix. You've mixed cement before, but you've never heard of stone dust. Yeah, that's where I'm going. You've never heard of it, but you use it. It's, op it's optional. It's optional. Why? Why is it optional? Just to increase the strength of the blocks. Strength of the blocks. So, is there any one you can do without? Stone dust. Stone dust. Any other one apart from stone dust? Impossible. Good. Stay where you are. Ah, uh, you went back. Come. All of you come. Come. You are teaching with me this morning. Give them a hand. Come, 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 come fast. The Holy Ghost was not stupid. When he said mix, he meant mix. It didn't profit them. You can be hearing anointed teaching. That's why you can sit in a church and the word is not reflecting your life because of the mix. There's skill in the mixing. You see that he, he does mix, but he has never heard of stone wood. So this is a skilled mixer. Is that okay? So is it going to help? Is that okay, church? Ah, is that okay? So he's going to have more, he's going to have more quality results than this man. The two of you are born again. Are you, are you born again? Are you born again? You have the Holy Ghost. The two of you have the Holy Ghost. But one is going to have a more skilled mix. Your blocks are going to be solid much more than his, even though you are born again. Okay? So, now, I want to begin from the cake people again. Come. Come. In every mix, there's a major ingredient. Think well. What is the major ingredient in baking cake? No, they didn't you hear you. Put the mic on. Flour. Flour. Major. Not butter. Not milk. Mm -hmm. So you have any anything different you want to say? Go ahead. Make sure you put the mic in your mouth so that the church can hear you. What's the major ingredient? What would you call major in your baking experience? For cake, I don't think there's one major ingredient. Really? How many of you agree? You, you can't do it. Can't do without flour, but you can't do without butter or sugar either. Is there has to be a replacement. Is if it not, it's not cake. You see, that's why I asked you: Is there any one you can do without? What is okay? Okay, let's let's twist the question. What is the stuff you can't do without in baking cake? So, if you can't do with it, then it should be the main ingredient. Huh? You know, you can try and use flour and bake cake. It don't taste well, but it's cake. It looks like cake. All right? But if you don't have flour and you use butter, it won't look like cake. It can't come out. There's nothing that, nothing will come out. Good. With meat pie, is that the same thing? Pastries. The major thing is flour too. Yes, sir. You can't use butter and get cake, meat pie. It will be buttery pie. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Good. So we all agree that in the baking industry, which one is more expensive to buy in quantity? Egg. Egg is more expensive to buy. Do we all agree? For those who bake. 
Please, I want to make sure there's an agreement. Huh? Because I need you to understand this. Egg flour, which is more expensive. Depending on the quality of flour you buy. Flour is not expensive. Okay. Flour is cheap. Okay. I hope you are talking inside that, Michael. Good. So. Mm. For tutu. Uh, they don't know what I mean. Tutu is 2,200. 2,200. Okay. A crate of, I mean, a crate of eggs is also... No, it's not enough. For a crate of, yes, for a crate of flour, it's not enough. Good. Yes. Good. You see, I... When we come to the explaining scriptures, I will send them back. But this one, I don't know about it, so I have to ask the professionals. So, since we put our heads together, the main ingredient is what? Flour. Egg is more expensive, but flour is the main ingredient. We agree with that. You agree? Thank you. Please come. What's the main ingredient? Come, let them see. What's the main ingredient? The main ingredient is water. Aha. Because we have replacement of cement. Aha. When I wanted to teach, I wanted to say some things. Uh, I just wanted to explain the mix. I would say, okay, the main ingredient for, for cake is flour. I wanted to say it. And the main ingredient, what I wanted to say, was cement. But the Holy Ghost, who is the ultimate teacher, told me in this aspect, you may have to ask the professionals. Now I'm hearing this, and I'm shocked. What is the main ingredient? Water. How? Water just educate us in the GF. Water can be replaced with any other agent. Cement, we have more, we have as in more replacement what, of cement. Give me, give me an example of replacement of cement. A bed, is it cow dog? Cow dog? Yeah. We did it in our final year. It's part of our project. Uh, wow. But it's more hard to get than cement. It's more hard to get? Yeah. We have replacement of cement. Quantity. It's a product some people are using it. Indian, they are using it. Indians, okay. When it comes to construction, Indian, they are very. Good. I see. So, a professional architect tells us that the main ingredient. Engineer, sorry. He said he's not architect. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been calling you an architect, right? Oh, sorry. This civil engineer in architecture. Thank you for that correction. Okay. So, a civil engineer has told us that the main ingredient for mixing of cement is what? Water. How many of you agree? How many of you thought it was cement? Thank you. Give them a hand. Now, open your eyes to this mix. I'll take the main ingredient of for baking as flour. And I'll take the main ingredient, this is strange for me to say, but uh, uh, follow the professional. The main ingredient for building or molding of a block is water. Please, those people online, it was a professional that told me. <laughs> in case you watch this, please, a professional told me in church here. Yeah. <laughs> that is water. <laughs> Nobody said I'm go to school. I hear them say. <laughs> now. The word of God in the mix of faith has a main ingredient. The problem with people is that they think the main ingredient is faith. That's not the main ingredient in the mix. You know what? It, there is a lot of people, they, have, they, all, they are looking for more faith. More faith. The main ingredient is, who can guess what the main ingredient is? Somebody say it out loud. That's why Jesus came and he says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, what that means, let me, let me explain something to you. Now watch this. How many of you use um, tabletop gas burners? How many of you use gas to cook, make your meals? I, I don't mean to be derogatory, but I know some people still use charcoal and stove preference. You use gas. Okay, so what's the main ingredient you have in that combination? The gas. The gas flows through the pipe to the table burner, if you, whatever it is you call it. Have you observed 
that the strike, the ignition you need is very little. The spark. Now, I want you to see that as faith. All you need is to flood your spirit with the word of God. And a little spark of faith. That's why Jesus authoritatively thought. He said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed. Now, let me tell you something. If you have faith, eh? Which is actually not, in, which is not possible in the equation of the spirit. Faith the size of this hall. And you don't have word. There's no ignition. There's nothing the faith can ignite. The main ingredient in the school of faith is not more faith. It's the word of God. Just keep soaking the word. One spark of faith. Spark. The thing will light up. So it's important you understand the main ingredient in faith. It's not faith in the mix of faith. You would think it's faith because the Bible says the word did not profit them. Don't be mixed with faith. The mix of faith is more word and lead to faith. So what scripture was saying here is that they had the word of God quite alright but there was no spark at all. So if you are going to live effectively by faith in the last days, you, all you need to do is flood your spirit with the word of God. I'm, I'm going to give you some practical examples. I wanted to bring something but it's um, it kind of it's dead. I used to have an iPod. But I don't, they don't sell the chargers anymore. I don't know if it's iPod Nano or something like that. So I wanted to show you some things but it didn't come on. All you need to do is spend time sitting down, listening to scriptures. Let me tell you a few things to do. Let me put it the way I wrote it down. Read the Bible. Listen to the Bible. I didn't say listen to messages. Read the Bible. Listen to the Bible and listen to messages. This is one of the ways to have the proper mix. Flood your spirit with the word of God. Read the Bible. Listen. I like this generation. The blessed thing about, uh, what do you call it? Social media and technology. Do you know that you can hear the Bible being read to you on an app? In fact, I think I have one here. How many of you, if you have ever tried it, let me see your hand. That's one. Put your hand down now. If you do it every day, let me see your hand. That's it. I've told you that the key to this thing is consistency in the school of the spirit. Sometimes sit down and put the audio reading of the word of God on play. There's something reading the word does. There's something hearing the word does to your spirit. As you are doing that, you are having the main ingredient for faith. And it may just be in one service or what your friend will say. And somebody will ignite faith or send faith or the person becomes a conduit for faith and once that faith sparks upon the word of god that you are being soaked in all of a sudden you be i mean i told you i told you the story of uh Kenneth hagen ministering to three ladies how many of you remember that story last week he laid hands on one she got up from the wheelchair laid hands on the second one got up from the wheelchair laid hands on the third one no he didn't lay hands before he laid hands he said the anointing the healing anointing has left left my body but you can get your healing by faith and he read second peter to her by his stripes you were healed what was, she, what, was, what was he doing to her? Do you think that was the main ingredient of the spark of faith? When Ken Higgin read to her, look at it, by his stripes you were healed. Ken Higgin asked her, are you going to be healed or were you healed? Do you think that was the main ingredient of the spark? Think well. Was that the main ingredient he was giving her? Or was that the spark of her faith? That was what? Why was it the spark of her faith? Because she's been sitting down under the teaching are you getting what i'm saying all you need to do is just sit under the word of god let me tell you something there is no running about in the body of christ looking for a miracle is a waste of time yes it's a waste of time i was i was listening to a pastor's conference and i was shocked the pastor called out for pastors repent all of you who do arrange miracles you know i hear it but i find it hard to believe that people do that so they have somebody in church the pastor will have somebody in church to go about and find out people's cases and come and tell him, then you, you come and say, there's somebody here, somebody here. Your husband slapped you this morning. And do you know pastors were repenting from arranging miracle? You don't need it. You don't need it. You don't need it. If you sit with the word of God long enough, the, the issue is the time. You must flood yourself with the word of God. You know one of the things I discovered in the Bible as I was studying? You can never hear the word of God too much. As simple as it sounds, it's liberating. You can never listen to messages too much. Never. 
The only problem is when you are listening to it at the wrong time. Maybe you are supposed to walk, somebody pay you for a job, and you start listening to a message, you should be sacked. But in your private time, the time that is your own, you can never listen to teachings too much. Let me tell you the power of the word of God. I told you about a serial killer in, in America. The guy was being hunted. I think it was in Dallas, Texas, or uh, Dallas, Texas, Fort Worth. Have you been there? No. <laughs> And this guy will kidnap women alone. Tie them up. Rape them to death. That was his job. Not your money. He will see their purse with dollars. He won't go. So there's this woman that's a partner of Kenekopla Ministries. KCM. She sows monthly. She's a partner. She believes in the vision. I think she went shopping or something like that. Came out from the grocery store. And as she entered that car, the guy was already inside the car. How many of you have seen things like that? Not in Nigeria. You will not see physically. You get what I'm saying? As you see it in the movies. Got a hold of her. Don't talk. Tied her. Got her. No. Didn't, didn't cover her mouth. But tied her up. And in, she too, because she had been listening to the news, she knew that this is the guy that she had been watching about. How many of you understand the situation? All right. So what, she knew it. And first, she now began to pray in the Holy Ghost. At the back seat too. Thank God it wasn't in the trunk. So the guy was like, stop, stop that. You're distracting me. Shut up. So if you want me to keep quiet, I want you to please play. There's a cassette in the cassette slot. There's a message there. No, not message. Just play. He said, will that keep you quiet? You, you meet, have you ever heard his ways are not our ways? Is a true thing. It doesn't make sense. In the first place, you should be in the trunk. If you want to be discreet, there can be police checkpoint anywhere. You see, one of the things in the school of faith I'll begin to teach is we'll get there if time permits me. God will do it, but I hate to bust your bubble. It is 95% not how you think he would do it. I'll show you in the Bible. In fact, it is one of the problems of our own faith. Why many of us are not receiving the results of faith? We have, you have not said it, but you pattern the way that it's going to come. And guess what? Because he's sovereign. Do you know God has pride? Some of you don't know that. You think pride is a bad thing as it were. He has pride. So sometimes he has to come in a way that announces him as God. You see how that your children's school fees will be paid? It will shock you. It's not what you thought. That your house rent? It will shock you. Please keep your house rent. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is pastoral now. I'll come back to the teaching anointing. Keep your house rent. But if life happens, you know life happens sometimes. Challenges come. There's a challenge that will come. What you are saving, you will use. See? May you never see it. You don't understand what I'm saying. See, the amen, the amen was filled with faith. You know, you won't see it. In this house, we, we, are, we are helped of the Lord. Uh, very padded Christian life we live here. Now, the guy, you, 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 you're sure you keep quiet? Yeah, all right. So he punched the thing, play. Can the Copeland began to teach? Or was, was the one teaching? And you know the way Copeland talks. Praise God, praise God. I'm righteous. And things like that. Can it, and all of a sudden, 10, 15 minutes into it, he got caught up. He looked and said, Who is this man? He says, Kenneth Copeland. You never heard of him? He said, No. He said, But well, anyway, shut up. I'm going to listen to him. And the guy kept listening, kept listening, kept listening, kept listening. Listened to a point, drove her to a point, untied her, and said, I want to meet this man. Oh yes, this is documented. Because there's something the hearing of the word of God does. I wish I can tell this generation enough that you don't need to run anywhere. It says, say not in your heart, who shall ascend? That is to bring Christ down. Or who shall descend? Well, you say, what saith it? Which means, you don't need to be doing this gymnastics of going abroad. Some people sleep in graveyards to solve a problem. Do you know that? In Lagos, Nigeria, and in your village, just in case you think it's Lagos alone. They sleep in graveyards. There was one they interviewed. For seven days, he had to sleep there and eat there to have a solution to his problem. Say not in your heart, who shall ascend or descend? But he now said something, say at it. The word is nigh you. If you can sit with the word of God enough, you will be impregnated. Is a law. Ah, have you seen a man playing together too much with his wife and something not come out of it? I told you of this wonderful sister. I will mention the state. She was always preaching the word of God. 
or holiness, then she had a fit of carnality. That's what I call it. A, tempt a tempting moment. And one thing led to one thing. There was no penetration, but she took in. Now, how much more when you have a penetration in the spirit? Have you seen some seeds grow on the earth without being planted? Abba. Where were now? Beans. Give me another type of thing that grows unconscious. Corn. What else? Pepper. You see it grow, but nobody planted it. Now you understand the scripture that except the corn of wheat falls to the ground. Some of them fall deliberately. Some of them fall mistakenly. But once it hits the earth, there must be impregnation. That's what I'm telling you. The word of God is enough. And when you fill yourself with the word of God, you one moment, I call it Kairos moment, faith will come. Boom! And you will be shocked that you have been ready since, but you didn't know it. So all you need is the word of God. On that situation, whatever situation it is you are facing right now, eh? I've been teaching this for years. Sit down with the word of God on the matter, including cancer. I was listening to my mentor. What the place uh, you dropped me off at. And he was teaching. He said, there was a woman that sent him a testimony. She had, um, I've, he I've heard him teach along those lines before, give that testimony. The woman had an accident and they were supposed to cut her leg off. Professional said, there's nothing we can do, this leg. In fact, have you heard situations whereby they will say, if we don't cut it, you may die. We need to cut this thing now. Ha! There are situations you will face. That is when you will know if you are empty or full. And she didn't want to have one leg. She said she looked at the same me. She said she didn't want. She didn't want it. And then she went to God and locked herself up and went to start feeding on the word of God. Feeding on the word of God. She didn't go to any prayer house. Of course, she was in contact with her pastor. There was spiritual covering. People were praying for her. But she went and she began to study the word of God. She said, Lord, show me the scriptures. That's, that's the proof of somebody who is in a well-taught church. Because the Bible says he upholds all things. If you know it, it's not a cliche. All things, including cancer and including the threat of being an amputee. It can be solved by the word. She started searching the scripture. She didn't see anything. And all of a sudden, she found the scripture. And my mentor said something I will never forget. He said, he said, what she found was not a healing scripture, but all scriptures heal. Blew my mind. Because if you soak yourself with the main ingredient, you will discover that it is enough. Even if it's not a healing scripture, all scriptures heal. Even if it's not a delivering scripture, all scriptures will deliver. Guess the scripture she found. He will not allow my foot to be moved. She shouted, that's it. By the time she went back, they found a way. She's walking with her legs. Because she found the main ingredient. He will not allow my... It's there. Everything we need is there. Everything. Stop looking for more faith. Or looking for more anointing. Just get more word. It's how to live by faith. You can never hear the word of God too much, ladies and gentlemen. Never. There's never a time where God will say, you have been listening to messages too much. No, it's a lie. In fact, you may not be doing it enough like you should. Let me tell you something. I stand on the altar of the living God as a practitioner of this truth who has seen it work. There is no situation you have. Let me use conception for an issue. If you sit down with the word of God, I, I, I'm not telling you two months, four months. I'm not going to give you the time. Because I've told you in the school of faith, you, won't, you don't know when it will come. But if you sit, let's say conception, you sit with the word of God and give yourself months. You are feeding on it. Feeding on it. Your spare time, you cut down movies. And cut down leisure. And you begin to soak. You begin to soak. Read my next statement. You will be pregnant. I'm telling you what I know you will conceive it is not possible not to conceive the only issue is time and staying there haven't you heard that the word of god is seed i asked you before how was mary pregnant was it not when the angel said what god told him hmm, as the word is coming the thing is entering so the main ingredient in the school of faith is no more faith it's no more hands being laid on your head 
Some of you have had hands laid, legs laid, and your head is becoming bald. And it's not natural. You look at in your ancestry, nobody has a bald head. Too much laying on of hands. I'm not talking down on laying on of hands. I believe in it. It's one of the basic elementary doctrines of Christ, fundamental doctrines of Christ. Laying on of hands. But let me tell you the truth. A believer that, is, that has the word of God, permit me to say, has everything. How? Because he opposes all things. Oh, That's the main ingredient. Just like somebody cannot bake without flour, and just like somebody cannot mold block without water. I had to say that once more. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> it's the main ingredient. Please help me tell somebody beside you the main ingredient is the word of God, not more faith. So, say it one more time. The main ingredient is God's word. So the word did not what? I want somebody to talk to me. The word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. So let me now talk about the flip. That's the flip side, the other coin. People have word but no faith. You have head teachings but no action. How? Show me your faith by your works. The proof that you have faith, I'll show you, is by speaking and moving. We'll get there. The proof that there's faith in your heart is your mouth and your leg. Mm, your leg in the manner of speaking. So there must be the mix of faith. You can't just be hearing and hearing and hearing. I know the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You hear to a point where faith is set in your heart. So the mix, the main ingredient in the mix for the believer in the school of faith is the word of God, not more faith, not more anointing, but the word. So I challenge, I'm speaking specifically to people's situations this morning. I challenge you to go back and have a word fast. Oh, my schedule is too tight. Let me tell you the truth. Every, you know what I've observed? Everybody has time for what is important in this busy world. Let me repeat it again. And this is what I tell singles. You love her. She doesn't have time to take your calls. I want to help you from a life of pain. She's not yours. Even the president calls his wife. Even if he's not where his wife is, the president calls his wife. Let me shock you. The president also gist with his children on the phone. You know. You don't know. Are you shocked? Well, in fact, some have time for girlfriends. Oh, you believe that one? Everybody has time for what is important to them in a busy world. So don't tell me you don't have time. You have time. It could be 15 minutes. Do it 10, 15 minutes consistently. It's better than looking for one hour in one year to do it. I prefer people who pray 10 minutes every day than people who pray 6 hours once in 2 months. And everybody knows you're praying. I mean, there's this IG reel that I see when you ask God for a prayer warrior. And you see the woman sleeping on the bed and the husband's prayer wakes up. And some of them get angry, but some of them are like, mm, that's the man I want. Praise God. I prefer your prayer life is more consistent than marry somebody who shouts once in three months. That's where the power is in consistency. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? I just want to break it down. First of all, point number one, the main ingredient in the school of faith is the word of God is not faith. Number two. Ah. It's not true. Is this 11? Nobody's answering me. Ah. Let's rush. Let's make this quick. Matthew 17 20. Media, you help me with this one quickly. Matthew 17 20. So this is the proof that your faith has been mixed. If you want to know that you have proper mixture, this is the proof. Matthew 17 20. If, if you have it, please help me read. Let's, let's read. Let's go. Let's go. It says, because of your unbelief, for very I say unto you, if you have faith, the grain of a mustard is stop. Is this is this telling you the quality of or the quantity of faith you need to activate a miracle? But you know the quantity of word you, you, you need for a miracle outweighs the quantity of faith. So you can listen to the word for one week and one spark of faith comes out of it. And that's it. So can you see Jesus is talking about the grain of a mustard seed? That one can do many things. So see what it says. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, be that removed to yonder place and and what and it shall remove and nothing shall be what impossible is somebody reading with me nothing shall be impossible unto you now look up 
in the school of faith this is the proof that your faith has been ignited your language but before i go there watch this and listen to this point very very carefully your faith will always produce but not how you expect it to so there's this story my pastor I've, I've heard in america and i heard my pastor teach it last month or give it as an example last month see what my pastor said there's this woman um i don't know if she was uh, she's pentecostal but i think her son was presbyterian or something like that when i mean son i mean a grown-up son with kids so the mother there's this mountain that is close to their house and she wanted for some reason the mountain to shift <laughs> you think she's crazy right do you think she's crazy you didn't hear what i said there's a mountain before your house you wake up one morning you read the scripture and say you want the mountain to shift if if your neighbor comes before you let's say you guys have a mountain close to you now if you live in abuja you are going to have those things a lot you just stay somewhere and you've seen beautiful mountains uh, i think there's a place i won't mention a place where my parents stay you just walk out of the house you just see one mass it's such a beautiful thing in fact there was a time they were trying to blow it up with dynamite so those people understand mountains around houses much more than us here we don't see mountains we see streets are you hear what i'm saying now this woman woke up and she just felt that these mountains are an obstruction so she called her son according to matthew 17 20 she said if you say to this mountain be that removed so say mountain in the name of jesus be moved she said her son notice the son is an adult with children who is not pentecostal because you know people have this perspective about pentecostals that they are crazy how many of you have seen that in fact the archbishop that also said pentecostals are not pentecostals because they appear like pentecostals so they said the son will laugh you know um i think he successfully laughed because he was not african you understand what i'm saying if you laugh at your parents praying in faith they slap you no matter the age you know she kept saying it the boy said mom let's quit this it won't work you know is the pentecostals that really quote and unquote believe in the word of faith in certain in quote so one day the government decided that they wanted to create a road there so they blew the mountain up she called the son and said open matthew 17 20 if you will say to this mountain be that removed now this is documented now the truth of the matter i know what you are saying is coincidence thank you very much coincidence that she has been explaining and declaring that that mountain will be moved it is not coincidence it's just that it happened i'm sure when you read this scripture you just feel the mountain should lift and go back to heaven like elijah elijah left now this is the major lesson that's why i teach people listen god can save through cs yeah yes Yes. Unskilled, I say this respectfully, unskilled pastors have made people feel it's a sin. And many have died. Oh, the catalog of people that died because of that. No? His word that you will give birth to a baby will come to pass. It may not just be how you think. I'm giving the story of a woman that uh, went through that and the doctor said one moment the baby would have died. So it will happen, but maybe not just how you thought it would happen. You need to understand that in the school of faith. Very, very, very important. Number two. This is not number, that was not number two. That was still on, under number one. Sorry about that. Did I say number two? So sorry. So put uh, 1B. Okay. Number two. Hebrews 4.11. Everybody needs to see this. Hebrews 4.11. What's number one point in the school of faith this morning? The mix of your faith. Your faith has got to be mixed. Number two. Stand on what Christ has done. Stand on what Christ, Jesus Christ, has done. Hebrews 11 and verse 4. You know, it amazes me, this generation, they are far from the word of God. We have so much internet, so much information, but people don't soak themselves with scriptures as kind of happened in my early days. I love Hebrews chapter 4 a lot. Can we read verse 4 together? Hebrews 11, 4. 2, 3, go. Everybody, lift your voice. Let's go. By. No, that's not how I want you to read it. 2, 3, go. Let's go. By. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By which he obtained what? 
a witness that he was righteous god testifying of his gifts and by it he being dead yet speaketh so what's the scripture saying by faith abel offered up a more excellent sacrifice have you ever wondered why god listen to i want to handle something this morning by the help of the holy spirit have you ever wondered why god had respect for why he accepted king's abel's offering and rejected king's offering let me see your head you've wondered how many of you have heard of different explanations how many of you know it's a solid theological argument today huh theologians have not agreed some people say it's because he had blood how many of you heard that who offered blood abel so god respected blood and all of that so it's been a theological argument now what i want to say from my little corner is from the little office that i believe jesus has called me to on my private bible study i think i found it do you want to see it the answer is in hebrews 4 1 he did it by faith but let me show you how he did it let me show you how he did it media help me run with this quickly genesis 3 17 let's go to cain and abel on what Christ now we are talking what's, in, what's point number two stand on what jesus christ has done so let's see how come abel offered the sacrifice by faith genesis 3 17 I want to read 17 through 23 and i need your undivided attention let's go together everybody let's go and unto adam he said you're not reading everybody let's go and unto adam he said because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which i've commanded thee saying thou shalt not eat of it cost is the ground for thy sake what did god say cost is what let's go in sorrow shall thou eat of next verse in all thy days eat in all of thy days all the days of thy life i beg your pardon next verse let's go songs and sisals shall it bring forth to thee and thou shalt eat the herb of the field next verse in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground and out of it was thou taken for dust thou art and unto dust shalt, shalt thou return next verse and adam called his wife's name eve because she was the mother of all things living things unto adam also watch this and uh, unto his wife did the lord god make coats of skin what did the lord god do coats of skin and what clothed them next verse and the lord god are you tired let's read and the lord god said behold man is become as one of us to know good and evil and now let's he put forth his hand and also take up the tree of life and eat and live forever next verse therefore the lord god sent him forth from the garden to till the ground to do what to do what what was king's job what was king's job you are not sure he was a tiller of the ground should we see that should we see that okay let's go to 4 2. genesis 4 2. Now, this is a prophetic explanation i saw it and i said this is it and i will explain it with the lens or in light of the new testament reality can we read everybody two three go and she bare again again bare his brother abel and abel was a keeper of the sheep but came what was adam's job by god what did god tell adam to do to till the ground was the ground cursed so watch this tilling of the ground represents adam's work adam man adam means of the soil so this is man's ability prophetically speaking are you getting what i'm saying what cain was doing was adam's ability all right so he offered an offering from his ability doing what man can do limited to man's limitation now let's go to cain what hold on what, what, what was abel's job here he was a what let me just give you an overview of the text so that we can spare going to the scriptures 
what did god what what did adam do in that text before god sent him out god proclaimed his job to be a tiller of the ground right his son came took took after him was a tiller of the ground so that's man's ability so when cain offered a sacrifice he offered a sacrifice premised on man's ability that was what cain adam beg your pardon adam mankind could do but what abel did was what god did what did god do god slew an animal i'm inferring and covered adam and eve did you see that in the bible so abel was a keeper of what of the sheep so cain was doing what man can do man's ability abel was hinged on god's ability so his occupation was a prophetic picture of what god did new testament reality this is the truth in christ you have the victory so you must always make sure that you are exercising faith premised on what jesus has done what god did was to slay animals and cover their nakedness what abel did was to keep the sheep that's what god did there so that's a picture of redemption what Cain did was what the fallen man did. Is anybody getting what I'm saying? So the occupation must be the your, your work of faith must be premised on what Christ has done, not what you can do. So what Cain did was what man can do, but what Abel did was what God could do. Is it clear? Is that clear? No, it's not clear. Is that clear? If I give you a microphone, can you explain this I just said? Cain did what the cost man could do, limited by what man can do. Abel did what God. He was, his occupation was what God did. So what was his occupation? What did God do? What did God do? What did God do? It's covered. What did God do? I thought you said you followed me. Didn't God kill an animal? To cover them what was abel's job a keeper of the sheep did god cross the ground and tell man to till the ground what was cain's job a tiller of the ground cain's sacrifice was prophetically premised on man's ability abel's sacrifice was prophetically premised on the finished works in a type and in a shadow are you hearing what i'm saying so what abel was doing as an occupation was what god christ as a first shadow had already done is that okay so your faith will be working premised on what christ has done that's number two so i want to ask a question before we go to number three i just want to make this practical like i said step by step what has christ done now that you need Can you marry your need with what Christ has done? Somebody here, please help me with your need. What need do you have that you can share? The camera won't be on you. You need a house. Hmm. If you meet some Christians and they argue with you, prove to me that what Jesus did on the cross gave you access to a house. Has Christ done it? Are you sure Christ has done it? In his death is the comfort of your home. Does anybody agree with her? Are you sure? Okay, explain how. Go ahead. Goodly houses. So is that what Christ has done on the cross? Is that connected to Calvary? So tell me how you feel it has. I know you're correct. But prove it. Okay. Good. Became poor that we through poverty might become rich. So we agree that Calvary covers your need. So you can release your faith premise on what Christ has done for a house. Is that okay? Any other need here? Healing of the body. That one is very clear now. Christ did something in that regard. Somebody give me something that is not very conventional. That you may struggle to believe that Christ did something on that. As, as it came, ha, just let me know if you have one. Ka. Mm -hmm. Does this have a connection to the cross? Because what Abel did was what God did. 
God slew animals, his occupation was keeping the sheep. A prophetic picture of operating from the finished work in a type and a shadow. So you can release your faith. That's why at the end of the day, Hebrews 11 4 says, What Abraham did was by faith. You understand what I'm saying? You know why? Because he sacrificed premised on what Christ has done. That's why it's called the faith of the Son of God. So if you are releasing faith for what you can do, you don't need it. But your faith must be premised on what Jesus has done. So if Jesus has paid for it, you should demand it by faith. That's why Abel's sacrifice was accepted. It was done by faith, premised on the finished work. Oh, what do you mean finished work? The Bible calls Jesus the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. You said a car. So I'm, I, I'm asking, can you link a car to what Christ has done? You see, some of you are, you are not, you see, you know it somehow, but you're not convinced about it. And if you're not convinced, there can't be faith. Now, let me ask you, are you convinced about it? Be very sure. If you're not, if you're still shaky, tell me where you are. 30, 60, or 100 fold. Are you sure that premised on the finished work, you can release faith for a car? Where you are now? It's me and you. The camera is not. Are you sure? Or are you, do you think, I don't think a car covers. Let me know where you are. Yes, what? No. From your answer, you are not sure. You hope so. You think so, right? Do you 100% know so? That you can stand in faith that what Jesus did on the cross covers your car. But okay. <laughs> but the, the, as in you don't have a scripture for it. You feel, I know where you are. You are 30 fold. That's outer court. So I want somebody to help me take from where Mr. Sobe has stopped. If you believe that the redemptive work of Christ covers that, because if you don't believe it, there's no way she can stand in faith and ask God for a car. Because they have faith must be premised on what Christ has done. So if she doesn't have faith for it, she maybe, maybe, I think so. She's not going to get it. Oh, you can get it by your husband buying it for you. I'm talking about by your faith. <laughs> so this is a clear example. It's not just her. How can she stand releasing her faith for a car when she doesn't really, she has not come to a full persuasion that Christ has done it. So how can she release her faith? The only thing she has to do is probably save, there's nothing wrong with saving for it, that's part of faith, or disturb her husband for a car. Because she doesn't really, she has not come to the place of full persuasion that when Jesus said it's finished, it included her car. And you see this thing we are talking about now, as simple as it sounds. That's the reason why many of you have not received what you want to receive. You don't believe that your faith has a st st strong ground to ask for that thing. You don't believe. You can't release your faith, premise on the finished works. Anybody here who believes that Mr. Sosio-based car is included in Calvary? Let me see your hand. So help me. What's the scripture? No, let's, let's be practical. Mr. Sebe said, Mrs. Uh, Ibukun said, uh, with God, all things are possible. Beautiful. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, Jesus said that you will get it. You believe that she has to also be sure for the reason. It must be a good reason. Also, that, that's also, that's also holds water in the school of faith, right? Motive. Motive. Ask, it shall be given unto you. <laughs> I like the scriptures that are flying now. Call on me, I'll answer you. Good. So why didn't you do toxins? Why are you behaving like you don't? You see, the problem is that some of you have not entered the point where you become fully persuaded that the sacrifice of Jesus covers this thing. The day you become, let me tell you something. You heard of the man who entered the flight and they were serving food for the first time. He said he didn't have money, so he didn't ask. They said, do you want to say pass? This thing happened. Pass. You know, if you're like me, you don't like to embarrass myself. I've entered plane. Who could reach where they go? Don't be giving me food and juice. Finish now. Come, come, come and tell me. Uh, you know, yeah, there's a restaurant. <laughs> I saw I just about about that they wrapped in a very creative way. Just rolled it with something, gave it a shape, and they, and they said a plate was like 55k. You understand? Very small. You know. Third point: speak out in faith. Matthew 12:34. So I want to explain something. How many of you use Boho? Oh, let's read the scripture first. Matthew 12, 34. Matthew 12, 34. Quickly, please. Matthew 12, 34. As we close. Sorry. 
So, God revealed to us in faith that one of us already has a wife to be, but it happened when people were not here. Don't ask me who. Um, you'll find that later. In faith, we received a wife. Amen. <laughs> I was trying to release his faith for a wife. I didn't know that his faith had gone ahead to get one. Praise God. We just pray that the faith got something good. Amen. I'm just kidding. Amen. Matthew <laughs> 12 34. Matthew 12 34. Who was speaking here? Who was speaking here? Does Jesus abuse people? But I heard the Jesus we teach today it doesn't doesn't even flog, it doesn't correct, it doesn't slap people. You know, it's finished, he's done everything. Amen. So let's read front and five, two, three, go. Old generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Thirty-five. A good man, out of a good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth. Take it back to 34. How many of you use water? You have running water where you live. I don't mean to embarrass anybody, please. You have running water where you live. How many of you, do they still have those government water that comes in places like Ojota? I, I say this respectfully, please. Huh? So I was, you see happens. Because when I was living around that place, there were some, but if you hope on it, you become hopeless. You see happens, right? Does it happen around here? Government water. Huh? This area is strange. But there. I have not seen here. I'm not seeing here. Good. But what's the, what, what's, what's the kind of system we use today that runs water into the house, that brings water into our house? We bore, the board one, right? Good. Definitely, if you have a borehole, you must have a tank. Scaffold. Is your tank on the floor? Your tank is up. Have you ever been in the house before and there was strike or your pumping machine went back and there was no water for a week? Wave if you've had that experience. There's no Nigeria, even if you live in Lekki. Good. It was frustrating, right? Especially if you have kids. Good. Have you observed that the moment they start pumping, one of the first things you have is excitement, right? I'm talking about that a long time. Ah. If you're up, you even behind the tank. Do you know? I'm sure your tanks should not be anything lesser than this length, right? Normally. Huh? Do you know how long it takes for that thing to fill up? You've not observed. Do you know you can be pumping for one hour and it's at this level? Depending on the width. And the pumping machine, yeah. So you discover that the, the tank is a little bit halfway, but the people upstairs don't get it. Have you noticed? It's the people downstairs. If you go to the tap, if you have a tap at the compound, you open it, you see it's dropping. You know why? The tank is almost empty. But as the tank keeps, as the water keeps rising in the tank, the pressure gets more on the ground floor. But it's only when the tank is full. I stay upstairs, so I know what I'm saying. That's when you have. Am I, am I not correct? Why are you, some of you looking at me like this? Huh? You don't know? Or you think when it's low, you get up first? No. Any professional here to, to help me out? So the ground floor, we get more water first. Everywhere I've lived upstairs, I we wait and wait. I say something's wrong with that. We say no, it's not. It's not. Nothing's wrong, sir. Usually they're above the house. Yeah. So mine is above the house. So do people agree with me now? Ah, they have explained to you. You don't agree. You agree with me? Okay. You agree. You stay downstairs. <laughs> <Is> there, I. <laughs> oh, you've not experienced this. Oh, really? Okay, it's all right. So this is what happens. All the places I've lived, the people downstairs will be enjoying water. In fact, the water would have started running out, they'll start fetching things, and I'm frustrated. Now, if I now go and open, and when I open the tap, and it must be one place in the house first, depending on the location to the tank, that starts dropping. Is anybody getting what I'm saying? Prop, 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 prop. Now, the thing is, because of the level at which I am, 
in that building the tank must be full before the tap speaks so jesus says out of the abundance of the heart now what people don't know about that scripture is the answer is there but we overlook it it didn't say the mouth speaks what is in the heart it says out of the abundance there must be abundance the key word is abundance not just speaking see things will be in your heart but it won't come out in faith until it's full So the reason why some of you have not been speaking in faith yet, do you know why? It's just have, think of that tank. You know where your, your word level is? Ground floor. Now, if you pump, have you tried to hit a tank that is being filled with water? Have you touched it before? You observe that the base is strong. But you behave, boom, boom. Why? Because there's nothing inside. Now, try and touch it when it's full. So, God began to show me that scripture. The problem is not just speaking. People are not speaking because they are not filled with the thing, the word, yet. It is out of the abundance of the heart that man speaks. Now, let me give you a practical example. Have you, has somebody done something to you? The person has been doing it and doing it or saying something and saying, and one day say, I've had it up in here. Right, some people are laughing. You understand what I'm saying? Has it happened to you before? If it hasn't happened to you before, has somebody expressed that to you? Maybe you were you always doing something and the person says, Stop, no, they call me that thing. And you keep doing it. Oh, I don't tell you, stop, no, they call me that thing. And one day, I don't know what, maybe the boss conductor made the person angry. The person said, People are waiting for me to act. See the way you're looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I've had, how many of you have heard people say, I've had it up to here? The tank is full. Um, at that moment the tank is full the mouth must speak that's how it should be in the spirit until you are full you can't talk it must be full so wait until you are full I know what God told me from this scripture very simply but it's powerful and true people have spoken to mountains with empty tank so it's like my flat because it's not yet full and I don't know why it's the kitchen that always runs first. I don't know. Have you checked my, my own? Once there's a strike like that, and they start pumping. If you go, that's one that we're open from. Others behave like they're not connected anymore. If your faith will work, let your tank, you know the tank is the heart. Let it be. That's why you must keep listening and keep listening, keep listening. If that, if that has ever happened to you, the way somebody is laughing, have you exploded recently? I told the person, I've had it up to here. I've had it up to here. I've had, and as that person says, I've had it up to here, the next thing you begin to see are weighty words that can destroy in anger. You know what happened? Every time you said that thing to that person, the water was rising. The water was rising. The water was rising. Don't call me that. It's rising. You had better stop calling the person that. The moment the tank gets filled, the person will call you something you will never believe. I have seen somebody call the father by the name out of anger because of the way he was mistreating the mom. He had been holding it. <laughs> One day, he called his father by name. The tank was full. I know somebody like that, but I won't, uh, let me not go much into it. So, if you are going to speak to the mountain, let your tank be full. Don't speak on empty. Oh, car owners, you know what I'm saying? One day I finished service here. I didn't know uh, the, my fuel gauge was, um, I don't know if it was fuel gauge or something like that. I just saw half tank, I don't know what happened. So yeah, I think it was fuel gauge was faulty, but it's been changed. I was boldly, after I started to some service, I just drove, just going home, listening to message and moving. Ah. I got to a particular place, I'm not gonna mention the name because I'm on air, praise God. And um, I was about going home. My car began to dance. Something was wrong. <laughs> Have you experienced that before? When you throttle, when your tank is low, it looks like there's a resistance, like it wants to go off. Any car owner here, Kilo Shelley, what's happening now? You don't understand what I'm saying. Okay, you've not, your car has never gone off on you. Oh, sorry, sorry, it has gone off. I've experienced that once or twice because of the fire gate. Do you know what I did first when I saw that? I knew something was wrong because my tank was showing half. So I shouldn't be having a drug. Are you getting what I'm saying? Anytime you are speaking and you are not seeing it, you should check the tank. Ex 
except the tank is faulty. So what I did, I stepped on it. <laughs> As I was getting to the estate gate, those guys that put the bar down, I started announcing, okay, clear off the road, because I'm not going to look for anybody to tow any car on the Saturday. I was, praise God, I was, um, is, it, is it hooting they call it? Is it hooting? I've been honking, what do you call it? Honking, sorry, good honking. I began to honk and honk and honk, and so they knew that it was an emergency with my dog, but I, I ran home, and I knew something was wrong. My tank is showing me half empty, but my car is jacking. At the end of the day, I discovered that there was an issue. So whenever your tank is depleted, you will not be having results. There won't be a smooth ride in your faith. So fill up your tank first before you speak. Let me tell you something. Why did Jacob, Isaac, tell his son to go and prepare venison and so that his soul will bless him? Because there's something you must do to get the soul of the patriarch to a particular place where he can release a blessing. Have you heard of people who curse their children? Huh? Has it happened to you? If your parents have cursed you here, let me see. Huh. That's a sensitive question. You will raise your hand in private, right? If your parents have cursed you here, place the curse on you. Let me see your hand. Praise God. Nobody. I hope nobody. I asked under the anointing. At the boy was teaching one day. People may argue. He said, if a branch pastor of Redeem curse you, a zonal pastor can lift it. It's the old cassette, blessing versus cursing. He said, but if a say provincial was senior to Zona. Huh? He said, but if a zonal pastor curses you, out of something, the provincial pastor can lift it. He said, if a provincial pastor curses you. I can lift it, him, himself. He said, boy, God curse you. So. <laughs> Anybody under a curse here, if you do something wrong, go and write it, but you are free from the curse. I say you are free from the curse. I didn't plan to say that, but you are free from the curse. In Jesus' name. So. Have you observed if you were a problem child and your father or your mother caused you? Do you discover they didn't cause you the first time? Maybe you, you troubled them. They went into prison to release you. Came out. They, there was a guy I heard in the village. When they came to shoot his son last time, he said they should shoot him. Kill him. This man won't kill me. People were saying, Is your son? He said, I almost died because of this vampire. Now, it got to a point. People who curse their children, they get to the point. That's why he must be careful. It gets to a point where they have done it. They keep doing. They keep doing your. T- At that moment, do you know there are some situations where your tank is getting full? You should go and release the tank and empty it. You understand what I'm saying? When it comes to negative things, because if he becomes full, you are going to release negative words. That's why the next verse is a good man out of the good treasure, because you can have bad treasure in the tank. So don't allow a bad treasure fill up to the point that you release your word. Let me tell you something. It is not only the words you speak positively that happens. The negative words you speak to also happen. That's why verse 35 says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart springeth forth good things, but an evil man. Now that also tells you the definition of a good man and an evil man. What's the definition of a good man in the Bible? The treasure is in his heart. How do you know a man is good? His heart. How do you know a man is evil? The heart. Not by carrying calabash. Entire red tower is the heart. So if you observe that, just like I was telling you, a child is provoking the parent. Once, as a parent, you observe that your child has been provoking you that way, look for a way to empty that tank. Or else one day, you just find yourself saying things like, you, <laughs> have you ever heard this statement? I hear sometimes in social media and I wonder what gives somebody the impetus to say it. Because I discovered that it was not a recorded thing. It was somebody who actually said it. You can never make it. Have you heard that? As in the boldness with which you tell... <laughs> the boldness with which you tell another human being. That, that voice was bold and sure. And there was, there was a tone and a harmony to it. You can... That's authority. How do you know somebody cannot make it? You can never make it. That is, the assurance is too much. How? As you, as you are even saying, before you get to make it, you can die. And the person still makes it. But you are, are you getting what I'm saying? 
the boldness. So you have to be very careful because when a child speaks or annoys you, you can, or somebody annoys you, you get to the point where you now release a word that you regret. You, you can never be anything. I've heard parents say their children that one. A pastor came on the pulpit. Somebody who's supposed to be a son in the house went after service, you'll be going to people talking about the pastor. And then the guy made some people leave the church, but the person was still coming to church. I told you guys, he's a, he's a Ghanaian pastor. He came on the pulpit, opened his Bible. Both the person that left and the people that left with them, father, make their wives widows. widows. Make their husbands, right? Widows. Cause them to drop. He was talking. And this is a large church. I knew that pain. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The thing was full. And he released a curse. Now, that assembly, I don't know where it is today because it was a big church, may never survive. Do you know why? The set man has released a curse over the work out of the evil treasure at that moment of his heart. So, even though this thing works in the positive, be very careful, it works in the negative. So when somebody is annoying you or things are annoying you, or Nigeria is annoying you. I mean, yesterday I was driving, all of a sudden, I was on my lane, and a downfall driver just came. I'm sorry, I don't know how those guys operate. He just came. He wanted to enter a place that couldn't enter him. You can't enter there. I was looking at him, he was doing like this, like this. Ah. Like, what's this one? I didn't agree. I moved. Boom. I went. He came from the front again. When he came, I said, this guy, you know, you have to use wisdom. Choose having the right of way or going to the Panabita. And I, I'm not in the mood of going to the Panabita. And I'm not in the mood of spending money like that. So I just swerved my steering left. Allowed the man and his grace pass. Are you hear what I'm saying? You can see such things in Nigeria. You come back and you're like, you know, every day you, you leave this country. Every day you step out of your house. Your tank is, water is entering. You know the water. The water of frustration is entering. It will enter to a point where you get to the point and say, look at, there are no roads in this country. Every road is a dead trap. That's it. Your car one day will enter one of the dead traps. Bam, and the trap will catch the car. So the moment that thing is filling up in your tank, what should you do? You must find ways to open the valve of that tank. And let me tell you one of the ways to open the valve of that tank. Praise and worship. Oh, it works for me. Like at this song that I use that is blessing me. Victoria Orenze. I sang it this morning. Oh, praise God. It's ministering to me these days. I've been hearing these things. It didn't make any spiritual sense to me too much. But that statement, I get back in. My God. It tells me nothing can swallow me. So I release pressure and sting with that song. So it doesn't just work in the physical, in the positive, it works in the negative. Make sure your tank is full of good things to speak good things. Make sure your tank is not filled with negative things so you don't release negative things. I'll stop that for today. It's the 12. Please stand to your feet. Praise God. Lift your hands and give him praise. Lift your hands and give him praise. Some of you have been coming to church. You don't know that your tank has just been filling up, filling up, filling up. Every day you hear that uh, you will make it. It's filling up the tank. You hear you're going to have a baby. It's filling up the tank, but you don't believe it. You don't think anything is happening. The water is rising. The moment it gets to a point by yourself, you will open your mouth and begin to speak positive words into your circumstance. Somebody lift your voice. If there's anything in your heart this morning, why don't you speak out? If there's anything you are full of or that you were filled with in this service, why don't you just speak out? If you were filled, knowing that that thing is possible, that need you stepped into this house with this morning is possible, speak out, speak out, speak out. Once the water rises, once the water rises, then the taps will speak. The mouth will open out of the abundance of the heart. If there's anything that's filled your heart in the course of this service, why don't you open up your mouth and speak? The reason why some of you are keeping quiet, I understand, is because your tank is low. But if your tank is full, lift your voice and speak out that which has been filled into your spirit. The 
The Bible says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and speak with other tongues. So the feeling brings a speaking. If there's anything you have been filled with, faith for finance, faith for your rent, faith for the next level, faith for your children's tuition, faith for that accommodation, faith for that house and the completion of that property you just bought. Lift your voice and speak out that which has been filled in. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Is anybody speaking online and on site? If there's anything that the Lord has put in abundance in your spirit, you've been hearing faith-filled words over time, and those words have been accumulating in your spirit. It's time to speak them out. It's time to speak them out. It's time to speak them out. Hallelujah. And you will have what you say. Put up that scripture that talked about the abundance of the heart. Put up that scripture. Is anybody talking? Is anybody speaking in the next five minutes? Is anybody declaring what they want to see? Only say what you have been filled with. Praise God. Lamba ko shaparama diyanu ko sadabaka. Zize fokondo shaparamakas. In Jesus' name. Look at this. It says, Oh, generation of vipers, how can ye be evil speak good things? Now, this question, I've already explained it. Which means you can't just determine you want to speak good, good things when you are evil. Is that correct? What's the definition of an evil man as we explained? I repeat, it says you want to speak good things. So these people want to speak good things, but they are evil. Okay? So which means you can't speak good when you are evil. What's the scriptural definition of an evil person? The person that has evil in abundance in the heart. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, let me explain what evil is for some of you. Some of you think it's when you want somebody to die. It's part of that, but it's beyond that. How many of you wake up in the morning sometimes you think when you go out you won't come back home? Do you know that's evil? Do you know that's evil? How many of you feel that somehow you just have this flashes that you won't be able to survive in this country? That is evil. Don't raise your hand. Now, if there's any evil thought in your spirit and in your heart now, I want you to release and open the tank. This is what this, this one now is not teaching. God has come for us. If there's any evil thought, you know what I'm saying? That thing that you always think about will happen to you. You just feel that when your husband goes back, they may call you and tell you that your husband is dead. You just keep having those thoughts. Those are evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. Now, I want you to begin to release it. However, the Holy Spirit inspires you to really release those words. If you have those tormenting thoughts, tormenting fears, filling your tank, the tank of your heart every day, lift your voice and release yourself out of that right now. Release you. Empty that tank. Empty that tank. Empty that tank. One of the ways to empty the tank, Jesus says, take no thought, saying, which means we fight thoughts with words. So why don't you replace those words, those things that the enemy has been making you afraid for. This is how to live by faith. We speak by faith. Everything the enemy has been making you afraid of, speak the opposite. So if you ever think that you go out and not come back, why don't you just speak the opposite? That every time I step out of my house, every time my loved one step out of the house, we will come back safely. Fight those words with thoughts. Deplete the tank deplete and empty that evil tank hallelujah lift your voice lift your voice and talk to the lord me empty the tank empty the tank empty your tank empty your tank, empty your tank. every tank of evil resident in your spirit sometimes you just look at yourself you are doing good but something tells you you will never make it you just you keep hearing that thought you keep and that thing you have never counted it it keeps rising like a water in the tank it keeps rising like a water in the tank to a point Point where you you decrease something over your life that will ensnare you for the rest of your life somebody lift your voice and deplete the tank that is evil every evil thought that the enemy has been rising the enemy is very patient he is very patient he can keep somebody for 10 years filling his heart with evil filling his heart with evil and after a while the evil overtakes the person lift your voice and deplete every evil thought and tank in your heart so that from today when you speak out it will be out of the good treasure of your heart Lift your voice and talk to the Lord. You know those thoughts. I don't need to call them by name. The Holy Ghost has resonated with you in your spirit. You know that you've been having these evil thoughts rising every day. You just feel you will never get married. You feel it's getting late and the enemy tells you it's not just that it's getting late. It is late. You can never get married. That thought keeps coming. And those are evil thoughts. But it's rising because you're not doing anything about it. It's rising and you're not doing anything about it. Now it's time to deplete those thoughts. Open the tank. Open the tank. Open the tank. And counter those thoughts with words. How you do it 
it is every sin the enemy thought or gave you as an evil thought speak the opposite that is good i i'm thinking a church should be releasing faith in this house on site and online we're already close but i sense the holy ghost doing something depleting people opening tanks but bringing out the rubbish waters the stinking waters in the spirit of people the stinking waters in the spirit of people what is making you think that your business will rise and fall why why why, why do you think that uh, where, where you read of businesses people that used to be rich in the 80s and their businesses crashed and the enemy tells you that is the way you will you will, you will end up god servant pastor but you went on tv and the enemy told him you see after four years nobody will know you that's an evil thought and he had to take authority over that thing it happens to the best of us but you must deplete that evil tongue every evil thought that has been rising especially for those of you that has been having that thought for over a year and you've done nothing about it today in the name of jesus take authority and speak the right words and fill your tank up the reason why you have to do it with your words is because the tank cannot be empty if you empty it of evil you have to replace it with good so somebody lift your voice open up your mouth wide and let god feel it let god feel it you just have a stinking thing that you'll be sacked and you have been keeping quiet about it why should you wake up in the morning go to work and you think they will sack you the devil is a liar that's an evil thought that's an evil thought that's an evil thought that's an evil thought that is rising in your heart why do you feel incompetent who told you you're incompetent that's an evil thought take authority over it take authority over it take authority over it you don't believe you can never have your own things you never believe you can have your own things the devil is a liar hallelujah two more minutes two more minutes are you emptying the evil thoughts in the tank the evil treasures in the tank are you replacing them with good treasures man that's how many people have snared themselves because they have spoken out of the abundance of their evil thoughts Oh, we bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have declared. Amen. Everyone under the sound of my voice, I come on the authority of Christ. By the finished work of Calvary, everyone bound, enslaved by an evil thought, the thought of death, the thought of never do well, near success syndrome, the thought of failure in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of God says casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself or it tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of Christ. I bring that thought right now in the name of Jesus into captivity and I declare you are free from that assault. I in the realm of the spirit open the knob to your heart and I, I, I begin to exist and extract every evil treasure that has tormented you thus far every evil word that has made you speak words that have ensnared you today in the name of Jesus I ask that your tongue be replaced with good treasures I said the tongue of your heart be replaced with good treasures everyone under the sound of my voice who has spoken negative words consciously or unconsciously over their marital destiny over their children over their lives their career and their marriage in the name of jesus christ by the mercy and the finished work of calvary we counsel every word spoken i said we counsel every word spoken and i declare in the name of jesus only good will happen to you every positive word that has been spoken over your life i ask that they will rest upon you i said i ask that they will rest upon you and they will manifest in your life in the name of god the father in the name of god the son in the name of god the holy spirit give jesus a praise somebody Thank you. What brings the spirit of suicide are these thoughts? Do you know that? It's been proven medically. When you think less of yourself over time, you become hopeless. And I know that there are many people all over the world that are facing depression but putting a smile up. I saw a video of a lady who just finished dancing. She wasn't twerking, so don't say, Pastor, are you watching a twerk video? She was just dancing, a Christian lady. Two hours later, she took her life. That's depression covered by a smile. I don't know who you are in this house. May Jesus reveal himself to you as a joy bringer. May you encounter God this week that will give you hope for a lifetime. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
I speak over the spirit of discouragement upon anyone. It is broken. You will go further and you will succeed. In Jesus name. Please, if you have your offerings, put them up. Our time is fast. Spent. The reason why I took some more time was because of the break and the rain. Amen. But I think the rain is stopped so we can go now. Amen. I just took your gist in time after service. That's all. Please raise your offering. If you have any offering, please raise it up. Can I give you a counsel for two minutes as you prepare your offering? If you have been scared that you'll be sacked, don't speak to people who were just sacked. Did you hear what I said? Hmm. That is the warfare. I'm not saying you should be sensitive to them. Don't stay in a conversation, conversation with people who they just sacked and you have been afraid that they will sack you. If you have cancer, don't speak with people who told you that their sister died from cancer. Did you hear what I said? Simple instruction, but very powerful. Surround yourself with faith. People who just bought a house in this economy. People who just married good wives in this time. People who are having it wonderful in this time. So that's what you should surround yourself with. Not the opposite of your fear. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because Elizabeth and Mary were carrying the same things that were connected. And there was a fusion. If you carry fear and you connect with somebody carrying fear, the babies will leap in the womb. Sure, you understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So please stay away from things that pronounce fear. And then you see that um, you will walk in victory. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. Bless these hands. May they never come down financially. In Jesus' name. Everybody prospers in this house. More finance, more money comes to the word city individually and corporately in the name of jesus thank you father as we sow for the fraudulence of your work in this house let this be used for the fraudulence of your work and let the blessing come to us and the glory come to you jesus name amen please let's sow our seeds with joy please do it with joy don't frown yeah the joy shall live by faith not foil amen <laughs> pastor you are talking you are talking i did do you buy foil you will tell me if you are the one that buys foil for me <laughs> i buy more than you <laughs> Praise God. So here's our flyer. Please let's um, do well to invite people uh, from straight to the point. Saturday, Sunday, 9 a.m., 75 Oshola Street of College Road, Ogba. Should we put it or leave it? No, Ogba, Lagos. Amen. Um, so let's turn to our feet as when the service will close. Our time is fast spent. Have we taken our offering? Oh, for those, please, giving online, did we put the details there? If you're sewing, uh, Tony on Oha Ministries, the details are there. What's happening to your screen, okay? And then that's for partnership seeds. And then if you're giving to the church, we have a Providence account. No matter the denomination, at least three denominations, Naira, Pound, and Dollar, you can sow from whatever part of the world. And um, it will get to us. Amen. Is tomorrow a holiday? Yes, sir. Hmm. The yes, sir was very loud. You're expecting it? How many of you are glad to have it? So, we'll be praying for five hours here tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Okay. I've never seen you delay your amen like this. Even the way you are laughing, you are jacking on this year. Five hours in tongues here. From 9 a.m. Is that okay? We're praying the Spirit. I'm just joking. All right. Stand to your feet. Let's go. <laughs> Even the person that is shouting, yes, sir. <laughs> Forget that, yes, sir. <laughs> the yes, sir was filled with deceits. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, that was yes, sir, by faith, right? It was by faith. Praise God. But how many of you would love to come? <laughs> You need to see yourself. I wish I could show you a picture. You need to see yourself. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Timothy is like this. <laughs> God. God. Uh, did you raise it? Raise it well. Let me see. Uh, but you didn't do like that that time. Praise God. That was half tank. <laughs> Amen. Have a wonderful holiday tomorrow. Rest and be rested. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Are we done? So our announcement is um, morning devotion tomorrow, 6 a.m. Midweek service strictly online. 
Wednesday, and Saturday on ground, Sunday on ground. May the Lord bless you and keep you. You will not fall. You will not fail. You will not lack. You will not see shame. Everyone connected to you will not see shame. You will not be the victim of somebody else's mistake. And you will not make mistake yourself in the name of Jesus. I declare abundance. Is anybody saying amen? I say I declare abundance. Abundance of good things. You will get calls of victory. Calls of promotion. Calls of addition. Somebody here will get a call of expansion. The business will expand in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I crown you this week with favor. Favor as a garment. Favor as a cologne and an ointment in the name of Jesus. As you walk into the right places, it will open up for you. Every wrong door is shut before your face. As you step out this week, every one of you, you will return back to your houses. Your loved ones will return back home. In the name of God the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost, Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please repeat these words after me. I'm the light of the world. I'm a city set upon a hill. I cannot be hidden. He upholds all things by the word of his power. Because he upholds all things, he will uphold me. I am helped of the Lord. 2023, my year of special miracles. Thank you for streaming with us. Sorry for the break for those of us online. God bless you. Amen.